Are there any questions to this complex issue? Maybe I can start with one. Uh, Renata, you said that when you produced TRAP, you had interviews, uh, amongst others, with group material. Um, how would you define this relation between American uh, activism and activist art to what you did in Germany? I mean, it's, it seems a little bit ambivalent. You say, you know, it's taken out of context uh, in, in, in Europe, this exhibition of, of posters uh, by ACT UP. And then, um, can, can, you, can you elaborate a little bit about this relation? D did we have a kind of, of activist art? Because when, when you showed what you did, it was, it was, uh, it was activism. Uh, but what type of aesthetic form did it get? Yeah, I think I can talk better about democracy than about my own project. Um, because at the time it was really important, I, I knew this book from the Art Foundation, uh, and the project I showed, which was called Copy Shop in Cologne, uh, where the book was also uh, present, and also the book uh, by Martha Rosler, who did the other half of the project. Um, and I think there was really a difference in how we conceived those projects from the U.S. because what you did was really like a involvement in a long project where many people uh, took part in, which was really directly involved in many um, political engagements of the time. And I was very impressed by that. But projects that came uh, to Germany and were shown in galleries and... Um, art institutions at the time, which I also would like to see. It was not that I was not interested in it, but usually this was all cut off. Mm -hmm. You just saw the aesthetic uh, mm -hmm. idea of what it had been, but you don't get any information about the context. As I said about the show, the posters were shown framed and one poster after another. And if you don't know a lot about all the things going on in the U.S., you couldn't get any idea what, what it was about. And um, so this was the thing we opposed. And also that then we got this hard, harsh critique, not only we, but uh, everyone who tried something um, which would bring, as you tried, uh, other things into the art institutions or open the art institution would get this hard critique of uh, being left as fascist or something which was really harsh. Uh, we had the critique for group material at the time was that we were aesthetic pluralists. That um, um, and that the idea of of was was in the idea of the, of inclusion was creating a context in which it was diluting the possible possibility for people to have a, a political or aesthetic experience of being outside themselves. It's very interesting in thinking about it. I think historically compared to now, in the sense that both theoretically but and also aesthetically, there are so many tools that people now have for at least trying to imagine the idea of um, mutuality or multiplicity as something that could be aesthetically organized, like the aesthetic, like the ecstatic moderation mm -hmm. of something. Um, but at the time, I think it's important to remember that those um, visualizations or those fantasies um, were not necessarily that available to folks, at least in the United States in particular, in which the museum was and the gallery were both understood as concretely neutral. Mm -hmm. And that false neutrality, um, which we now, I think, pretty much generally understand as a, its own ideology, was, was a moment in which uh, the diversity of these kinds of practices confronted um, um, a, new, a new kind of regime. <clears throat> in a way, it seems that we get into trouble with the idea of uh, a book series on exhibitions when we approach uh, the time we're discussing today. Because what comes to mind looking at both of your practices uh, in those times is that the exhibition is, in a way, a minor field or one field of cultural production. Uh, you, t you did discussions, symposia, lectures, books, publications, and it seems that exhibition 
is, is, is a minor issue or becomes a minor issue, which you know, would be a problem for our book series where the focus is explicitly on the exhibition. So could you comment on this? I wouldn't say so, but I think it's, yeah, as I mentioned, it's important to provide a context. And um, I think with trap, it's somehow true because uh, um, one of the arguments was that we didn't want to get into the argument about good art or bad art and that we didn't try to do good art with, uh, with, with trap and that it was just something very quickly Made, but other exhibitions I worked on at the time, for example, what I sh briefly showed, Game Girl, was very much f for me an involvement in the idea of exhibition making and seeing the exhibition also as a kind of a visual argumentation. And it was also involved in other things, so there were also debates going on, there was uh, material available, but the uh, exhibition uh, uh, was a very uh, important tool also because um, it was an intervention against other exhibitions all the time, also with the issue of technology, um, where there were, were a lot of really big, very affirmative uh, exhibitions on technology at the time, which for example, also took, uh, took over ideas by Judith Butler. So if, you, uh, if the body is constructed, you can uh, construct your body by gene technology. For example, a big exhibition called Posthuman that was in Hamburg uh, in the 90s. So there were ex big exhibitions, and I thought it, uh, yeah, it's important to also use exhibitions to put something against it. And your exhibitions were quite visual, also. I yeah, mean, I mean, I in a sense, um, the history of group material would be would in a, would in a sense suggest from different viewpoints, and there are so many. But from my own, in particular, um, although there were always these inclusive gestures, I think the failure of them in relationship to creating an idea of of a kind of emancipat emancipated idea of social inclusion. I mean, those of the those those of you who are in the room, you know this that the, the the actual political work that we do to create social change is often not as um, symbolically rewarding as this um, um, dream, this dreamt collectivity. So I have to say that in in what I was trying to talk about, this idea of the metaphysical or the abstract idea of mm. the social project of group material, that it did, in a sense, center into the exhibition itself and the, and the design of the exhibition, although, although immersed and anchored in the concrete, was, I believe now, looking back at it, and this may be my dream as an older person, um, but looking back at it, I see it as having a kind of, um, a kind of uh, uh, affect, affective way of organizing people's ideas of the political in which the juxtaposition between objects that are not necessarily understood as humans having agency could begin to have agency in a way in which people would be your term beside themselves um, in a group of different kinds of voices. I mean this idea of the exhibition as social forum is all over the, the actual documents of the time. Um, but what an exhibition or what is an aesthetic experience as a social forum is something that I'm now interested in on a more abstract level. But I think <clears throat> you're right that this idea of uh, becoming, of um, um, having certain ideas how to live, not only in the art context, but mm -hmm. to live. I mean, you also show the poster free and so on. Mm -hmm. no? um, that's uh, difficult to put into a book, but it's a challenge, I find this. Yeah. Interesting as a challenge to also try to get this in the book somehow. Questions? Yeah, Pablo. <coughs> Maybe to insist in this, this thing that you just commented, Doug, that even though both exhibitions seem to have a, maybe an awareness of this. Uh, idea that an image can have an effect. So, and then the affective power of, of the visual material can maybe create these disidentifications or maybe identifications which are temporary or not. There is a, a suspicious of the, of the pure visuality how, 
in the way that the aesthetic experience has been defined since 1800. No? Mm -hmm. The idea of this uh, detached experience of pure visual uh, aesthetic approach without discourse. So that, that suspicion seems to me apparent in the fact that discourse is wrapping every single operation uh, in single these exhibitions. Operation? Sorry? Discourse is wrapping. Yeah, every, every single move that you, these exhibitions uh, Make in every in every level is wrapped around uh, is wrapped with discourse, critical discourse, which seems to, su to suggest uh, yeah this uh, um, distrust of the pure visuality. Um, is, is that is that true or was was that was that a, an issue? Was that a um, part of your of, of your ideas when you were working on this, or is it something that you can think of from today? Or? Well, um, I think I would think. And, it's, it's so hard because what we're dealing with is a really, at least in my, both of our cases, a long, a long history. And that um, in the beginning, I think there was an, a notion that, yes, indeed, um, the, 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 the idea of the museum as a space for um, um, social emancipation or the gallery as a space for, um, um, as a political forum w was one that mandated this idea of, in a sense, surrounding the artwork with discourse. Um, I think later on that became less so in a sense of like not necessarily surrounding it with discourse but trying to in a, um, in a way uh, um, put it into but put it into the exhibition in a way in which the rhetorical or the socially descriptive could also be misrecognized in relationship to its relationship to the aesthetic. So for instance in AIDS timeline around the bottom was an artwork by Stephen Evans which was the um, um, titles of the number one disco songs for every year. And AIDS Timeline chronicled the development of the AIDS crisis. So as a viewer, one could sense this context of participation through the affective identification with a song like It's Raining Men. And to see the title of It's Raining Men next to um, the budget for the B-2 bomber, which then is next to the uh, shockingly um, diminutive budget for AIDS research, all of those things happening at the same time um, and experiencing that next to the Empire Strikes Back poster and an abstract painting by Nancy Spiro creates a kind of confluence, I believe, in relationship to the a confluence of the possibilities between discourse and aesthetic experience. In other words, that information and epiphany could, in a sense, take on um, um, related, a related moment. It's a problem. I mean, this idea of the social turn, I feel this way as a teacher now.